concur. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon to you and the members of the Transportation Committee. For the record, I'm Neil Kirk, uh, representing Hillsborough District 7, the towns of Goffstown and Ware, and I come in very strong opposition to this bill. Um, this bill is the camel's nose under the tent, and it's a tent that this legislature has, uh, at great expense to the state budget, uh, kept the federal government out of. We passed a number of years ago Real ID, banning Real ID in New Hampshire, because it was, in effect, a national driver's, uh, excuse me, a national identification card system with, a nor with an enormous amount of data on New Hampshire citizens being transferred to the federal government. That's exactly what this bill does. It does it for a smaller number of people, and it's voluntary, but it sets up the system, and it is the start, and it's step one of what invariably will be an incremental system, so all of our data goes to Washington. Now, in response to the chairman's question, Mr. Bailey, I hope, made it clear that we control our motor vehicle database now, and we determine who has access to it. The database is in New Hampshire. It's not shipped out. It stays here. Um, to show you some of the problems with this bill, I'd like to go over it so that if you act on it, you'll correct these things. And frankly, I don't see how you could correct these things and still have a viable bill. Um, section 1, this is page 1, section 1D on lines 3 to 5. This is an exception to the existing ban under motor vehicle rules on biometric identifiers such as facial images and electronic signatures. And they need that exception in order to allow them for the enhanced driver's license. Um, if you go down to section 3, Roman 1 on page line 15, please note, the department may enter into a memorandum of understanding with any federal agency for the purpose of obtaining approval of the licensed uh, card as proof of identity and citizenship. All of a sudden, this information is going into a federal database. Number two, same page, lines 19, this is 2A. The department may issue the license who to someone who provides name, citizenship, identity, date of birth, social security number, resident address, a photographic identity document, and any other documents that may be required by the responsible federal agency. Please note the vastness of this kind of information and we are, in effect, turning over to a responsible federal agency the determination of what documents we are going to require from New Hampshire citizens. It, this paragraph is important because later on you'll see how all of this information gets shipped off to Washington. Going to D on the next page, This is line, on page two, lines one through eight. Um, may include an RFID, which is limited to a randomly assigned number which shall be encrypted if agreed to by the Department of Homeland Security. Translation into English, we can use the electronic product code standard, which basically has a read length of 30 feet to 60 feet and is unencrypted unless the Department of Homeland Security decides that they want it encrypted. In other words, again, we are turning over the security of New Hampshire citizens' information <coughs> to a federal agency. Um, the card shall not include biometric data, which is, I think, a good thing. Notice, the department shall ensure that the radio frequency ID technology is secure from unauthorized access. But remember, the feds have access, authorized access to this. So this is hardly any protection for New Hampshire people. And it talks about measures to protect, protect against authorized disclosure of personal information. Um, personal information is not defined, but it presumably is something different from biometric data. Um, who decides what's personal information? That is to say, what's protected and what is not protected. 
going on to line 26, Roman 3a2. You have to provide documentation demonstrating the applicant's United States citizenship, etc. All of this is going to be digitized and shipped off to Washington. Going on to B on the same page, that's line 32. Shall have his facial image and signature captured or reproduced by the department at the time of application. And it may be used, may be made, made available by this state and used as follows. By a federal, state, or local government agency for any law and purpose, law enforcement purpose authorized by law. Federal law, state law, law means rules and statute, not statute, rules and statute. So the Department of Safety, under the guise of this language, could expand whatever they wish to by simply having rules to expand the, the uh, purpose for which this could be used. Same thing for the federal government. They could do this by rule, not congressional statute. This information goes to another state to the extent required by federal law, again, ceding to the feds control over New Hampshire's driver's license system. And I thought we had the Tenth Amendment here. By the department for any other purpose specifically authorized by law. Remember, law is statute and rules. Federal rules, state rules. This is the camel's nose under the tent uh, in, the, in the greatest extent. What we're doing here is allowing these folks to ship off to Washington and, and put in a database all of the information that people are required to provide if they opt for an enhanced driver's license. Um, and then four, for any other purposes determined by the department, provided a person agrees to it. That's not too bad. And then as otherwise otherwise authorized by law, which I've already indicated is a problem. Um, if you look down at 5E, this is page 3, line 11. Um, the on, on, uh, where is it recorded? Section E says that the department can require additional information if the applicant is, if it, and can reject all of these documents, and even if it rejects them, all of this information has to go down to Washington. The department retains copies or digital images of these documents. We're creating our own dossier on people with all of the information that's contained in any document, from their citizenship papers to their birth certificates, anything, is now in a database that our Department of Safety is creating when we have specifically denied them the ability to do this when it comes to regular driver's licenses. There is, there is one saving grace here. If you go down to H and I on this page, H is on line 25, the department may disclose digital images of documents retained under this section to federal, state, or local law enforcement agencies for any law enforcement purpose authorized by law. Again, ship it all off, create a database. But then, you'll be pleased to note and I, the department shall not compile or maintain a database under this section that may be shared with any country other than the United States. I'm filled with joy. Basically, this is an effort to co-opt the state government in violation of the federal constitution as determined by the United States Supreme Court in a case called New York versus U.S. When this house several years ago and the legislature rejected Real ID, we gave up three million dollars in a hard-fought battle for an earmark in Washington by Senator Gregg so that it wouldn't cost us anything to participate in Real ID. We were one of a few um, lead states. We said no. The protection of our residents' privacy against the federal database and claiming all of this information for Washington was too important. And other states followed. And now Real ID is a law that's hollow on the federal books because nobody is enforcing it. 
The feds came up with something called Pass ID, a variation on Real ID, and now the Enhanced Driver's License, a variation on this. We need to say no again. This is not good for New Hampshire citizens. I understand that it will make a difference, or some people believe it will, if you can shave a few minutes off or a few seconds off going through a crossing and transact business that way. But that's too high a price to pay, in my opinion, for the potential danger to our privacy and freedom that goes with the state and national databases that this <coughs> bill specifically says are authorized. Mr. Chairman, I urge this committee to vote this bill out ITF, and I'd be pleased to answer any questions it may have. Thank you, Any questions? Representative Hawk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Representative Kirk, for your spirit of testimony here. Uh, I just have one. You know which way I stand on this bill. I, I, I'm, I'm getting the uh, uh, My question is, my question is, and and just it, it's. I would like you to confirm for me if you believe this is true that if you do get a passport, which will enable you to travel to Canada, you in fact have to give them all this information anyway. The feds. So if you're going to travel to these places where you can go with this card, you still have to get a passport without this card and give the feds all. This is that, is that not correct? Um, I can't answer that because I don't know the answer. I don't know that all of the information that you give on a passport, or may be required to give on a passport, is the same, more or less, than what is required to be given to get an enhanced driver's license. Um, moreover, I do not know whether passport information is shared with law enforcement officials. Um, but I would point this out. We, in this legislature, can't control what the federal authorities do with respect to passports. But we, in this legislature, can control what our Department of Motor Vehicle does with respect to New Hampshire driver's licenses. And even if the premise of your question is correct, and it may be, I just don't know, um, it would be wrong for us to go ahead and create these databases both in New Hampshire and out of New Hampshire when we don't know what further uses will be made of them out of state. And we will not be able, under this bill, to control the department as to what use is made of the databases within state. They have complete authority under the rules to do what they wish with this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Yeah, Representative Kirk, you, you always uh, are uh, a champion for uh, individual rights, and uh, you should be commended for that. The, um, the question, though, I have is, is that in Director Bailey's presentation, he said that at present, communication of New Hampshire licenses, data on New Hampshire licenses, is shared with federal law enforcement agencies through NCIC, correct? So this would just provide a chip on uh, an optional chip on your enhanced driver's license that would be read by TSA folks at the, the border. I mean, they already can access this data information anyway. So I, I, I'm really concerned as to, I don't, I'm confused as to what's the difference? First, there is a separate concern about access to this data by unauthorized users since the since the RFID chips that may be used, and the department could have something stronger, may be unencrypted, maybe because they have that authority if they wish, and maybe the information on it, which could just be an identification number, and therefore without other information of little use in and of itself. I'm putting aside that to answer your question. Let's just talk about the data. Right now, the data that you refer to resides in a New Hampshire database and it's queried on a one-on-one -on -one basis. A fellow named Kirk comes up, we have reason to think he's committed a crime. The cops can have access to that database, DMV, for purposes of finding out where Kirk is and his address and things like this. But they do not have access to the entire database for any other purpose. If this information is shipped down to Washington, those restrictions are eliminated. The entire database of ESL drivers would be down there, usable for any purpose and outside of our control. 
So right now, what we control, we limit. Under this bill, all of this would go down to Washington or be in New Hampshire, and the entire database, not just a single query, would be available to the state and to law enforcement. That, to me, is a very big difference and an important difference. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Rowe. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. What is different about the information that would be in this than the information that those of us who file a tax return with the federal government, they have access to already? Uh, assuming that the federal law is followed, and in most cases it is, access to the information you give to the Internal Revenue Service is available to federal folks on a case-by-case -case basis. That is to say, individually identifiable tax returns are, are protected, not just in New Hampshire, not only in New Hampshire for New Hampshire tax returns, but in Washington. Uh, they contain very different kinds of information than the kinds of information that we're talking about here. Um, when you fill out your tax return, you don't tell them that you're a citizen necessarily, well, in some cases you have to, but in most cases you don't have to tell them that you're an American citizen. Uh, you don't have to tell them where you were born. You tell them your name and address and you know where you made your money. Um, but it's different, and I may be incorrect on the specifics that I just gave you, but it's different kinds and limited kinds of information that you give the IRS. Also, there are many restrictions on the information in Washington from a tax return that makes it in a, inaccessible to other people. We know that President Nixon got in trouble when he tried to get tax returns of various people. And we know that a number of tax department empl IRS employees have been fired because they looked up, uh, let's say, some movie star's tax return. So I, I, maybe I'm not following your question, but I don't see the relationship between the fact that we have a database in Washington controlled by the feds that deals with tax information and a database in Washington controlled by the feds that deals with passport information, neither of which we can do anything about, and this bill which says, let's create another database of a subset of New Hampshire citizens and ship that down to the federal government. That's the problem. Because once we ship that down, Mr. Bailey in a few years will come and say, look, we're already doing this. Let's just expand it for every New Hampshire driver's license. It'll make it much easier for us to access airports or whatever it is at that time. I don't want that situation. We need to stop this, cut off the head of the snake before it bites us. That was not Mr. Bailey. I was not suggesting that Mr. Bailey was a snake. Please. <laughs> No more testimony. Uh